Hey guys and gals, welcome back in. Tim Knox here. This is Kindle Direct Publishing Q&A. I am your Kindle coach, Tim Knox, the morning after the Super Bowl. Go Peyton Manning. Hey, today uh, we're talking about a topic that I get asked about a lot, and that is hiring ghost writers. Hiring writers to do the work for you, which is a common practice in our industry. Some of the uh, most well-known books of all time have been ghostwritten. Uh, the Bible. I'm sure I'll get email on that one, but that's okay. Uh, specifically, what we're going to talk about today is hiring ghostwriters from Upwork. Upwork.com is a website where you're going to find a ton of ghostwriters. It's the old Elance website. It is where you can go and find someone who can ghostwrite uh, fiction books for you, as well as nonfiction, pretty much anything you want. Uh, the old caveat, you get what you pay for, applies tremendously on Upwork, so keep that in mind. So it's kind of a convoluted topic. I have my professional notes. Many people will use PowerPoint. I am a huge fan of just paper and pencil. And of course, I doodle odd little men on the back. I'm sure that one day I will be psychoanalyzed by my doodles. And what my wife has always thought will, <laughs> will be proven true. So let's talk a little bit first about the process. Now, a lot of this depends on whether or not you are doing fiction or non-fiction. Two completely different ball games because fiction is just that. It's made up. It's stories. It's not based in fact. Typically, non-fiction books are going to be things like um, anything from recipe books to those stupid essential oil books to motivation to business advice. And those books typically need to be written by someone who has a clue about the topic, be it a subject matter expert. Uh, you can get people who will just go out and do the research for you on Google and throw it into a book. But if you do that, please do yourself a favor and your audience a favor and review the book yourself and make sure it is semi-coherent. What we're going to talk about today primarily involves fiction. I own a digital publishing company. We have hundreds of books. Most of them, probably 95%, have been ghostwritten by writers that I found on Upwork using the exact same procedure that I'm going to talk to you about today. So uh, we're going to approach this from a higher level. Uh, at the end of the video, I am going to tell you about my new coaching program. Of course, you can't swing a dead cat these days without hitting a coach. Uh, mine's going to be a little bit different. Mine is more nuts and bolts oriented, uh, and it's going to be targeted toward anyone who is just getting into Kindle and wants to do it the right way. I'll tell you about that later. Let's address the topic. Okay, so if you go to Upwork.com, you have to understand how Upwork works. It very much is a marketplace. It's just like, uh, oh, uh, guru.com. It's actually even like ebay.com because you're actually selling something. In this case, you're selling the task of writing a book for you. So the way it works is you register on upwork.com and then you post your job. Now, it's very important that you are very clear about the job you are posting. And if you are one of my coaching students, uh, you, of course, get the the job posting form. But even if you're not, you need to detail uh, specifically what you are looking for. I am looking for uh, ghost writers to write 10,000 word works of fiction in uh, the erotic genre or the clean genre. Or I'm looking for someone to ghost write a book on house flipping. The post that you put up there uh, needs to be very clear about the task at hand, what you're willing to pay, and any terms and conditions. And we'll talk about that in just a second because this does need terms and conditions. Uh, the primary term is we don't pay if we don't like the work. That's a very important one. So post your job on Upwork. Have a really good job listing. You are probably going to be inundated with people who want to write for you. And I'm, I'm glancing down at my notes here. A couple of things when you are uh, weeding out everyone who wants to write for you. Number one, I only use uh, English speaking, English writing writers. Now, that's not to say they're in the U.S. One of my best writers is based in the Philippines. Another is based in Russia. But they are fluent in English and they can write in English. There's a big difference because a lot of people can speak English. Eng <laughs> I can't speak English. A lot of people can speak English, but they can't write English. Sometimes I can't do either one. So as you are posting the job, you're going to see the options there. Uh, I recommend that you only use intermediate level writers and you only use those who are fluent 
in English. And Upwork even has a little test that it'll give writers uh, to test their fluency. So make sure you only use English speaking writers. Keep in mind the majority of ebooks sold today on Amazon are sold in the English market. So it's very important. Again, they don't have to live in the US, they just have to be able to write like they do, or actually write better than most people in the US. Most people in the US can't write their own names. That's a whole another diatribe. So what are you going to pay? Typically on Upwork, you're going to pay about $100 per 10,000 words. Now that's about a dollar per 100 words. Uh, when you are doing fiction as, as I do, our books at uh, Digital Hearts range from uh, 5,000 words, which are very short stories, and we only use those in compilation books, uh, up to 15,000 words. Now 15, 10 to 15,000 is a good number. We're going to talk about 10,000 just for this video. You're going to pay about $100 for a 10,000 word story. Okay, so that's going to be about the going rate. You can pay a little less, but again, you get what you pay for when you are hiring ghostwriters. Uh, another thing, don't expect great writing. Okay, you're not going to find John Grisham, you know, sitting around on Upwork looking to ghostwrite erotic romance for you. It just, it just ain't going to happen. There are really good writers there. And when you find one, you damn well better hang on to them with <laughs> for dear life. But the majority of writers um, on Upwork, hell, they can't even write. Let's just be honest. Most of them uh, are people who are uh, either have dreams of being a writer or they live somewhere. And this is a second way for them to make money and they can string together a few words. Most of the writers on Upwork suck. And I'm using suck as a technical term, uh, being critical of writing. All right. So what you do is when you start getting people applying to your job, you're going to ask them for samples. Now, most of them will have samples to submit to you. This is the first step in weeding out the really bad writers. As you read the sample, if there are grammatical errors, if there are spelling errors, if there are structural errors, if the story just doesn't make sense, no thank you. Put those people out of the way, click the button, put them out of their misery, fire them quickly, save yourself time. Because if their sample is no good, I guarantee you their writing is no good. Okay. So, and keep that in mind, because if they're submitting this to you as their best work, you can imagine what the rest of their work looks like. So uh, if you do get samples that are good, you do want to move to the next step, and that is a conversation with this writer. You can either do uh, a conversation via Skype, or you can use Upwork's instant messaging service and have a conversation there. Typically what I do, uh, I will use the message service. I will just introduce myself. I will reiterate the project task. I am looking for someone to write this specific genre, this many words, this is what I pay, and this what happens, this is what happens if I'm not happy. Once that is established, then I will set a milestone. All right. Now milestones are simply this. If I'm going to pay someone a uh, hundred dollars to do a 10,000 word story, I'm going to split it into three milestones. The first one is a 1,000 word milestone. That's typically five or six pages of this story. I want to see what they can do. So I'm going to set a milestone in Upwork to pay them $10 for the first 1,000 words. This is the second way that you weed out writers. You may get 1,000 words that is just great. It's good stuff. You're good to go. You may get 1,000 words that is just complete trash. One thing that I have found on Upwork is a lot of times uh, the samples can be really good, but the actual writing, not so much. I think that is simply because people are either using someone else's samples. There are also agencies on Upwork. And I only did one quote, which I guess leaves it open forever. Um, basically, these are people in countries like India where they will bring the work in and they will funnel that work out to different writers. And what happens is the writer that ends up writing your work is not the writer that you read on the sample. So if the first 1,000 words is great, then you will do another milestone for the midway point. Okay. Uh, let me back up for just a second. One of the things that I think a lot of people get confused on is, do you, the, the publisher, uh, assign a specific plot, character, et cetera, et cetera? I do it both ways. I will ask 
the writer, what genre are you most comfortable writing in? What have you written the most in? Is it romance? Is it erotica? Is it clean? Is it Western? What is it? Whatever genre they're most comfortable writing in, uh, I will either let them come up with an idea that I approve or I will assign them an idea. And I have hundreds of ideas. And if that's the case, basically what you're going to give the writer is, okay, here's the genre, 10,000 words. The main characters are Bob and Jill, and this is their situation. This is the conflict. This is the drama. And it, in, you know, you basically are giving them a, a thumbnail of the story. Of course, Bob and Jill are going to end up happily ever after in most cases. Uh, if they don't, Oh, well, it's a, it's a real life book. Uh, so you give the writer something to go by. They then submit the first 1,000 words to you. Remember the term fire fast. If the 1,000 words are no good in the contract, give them the 10 bucks, send them on their way. Okay. If the first 1,000 words is good, you will set a second milestone for 5,000 words, and you're going to pay them $40 to get to that point. Now, remember, you just paid them 10. You're going to pay them 40. That's $50 when they do that. Now, keep in mind, you do not pay them until you have reviewed the work. You do not pay them the second that that, that document is uploaded to you. So you set the milestone at the halfway point, you get the 5,000 words, you read it. If all is well, you set a final milestone for the full book. Okay, you pay them and set the milestone for the full book. If there is an issue, you go back to the writer and you say, these are the issues that I have found. Now, you can go through the document yourself and do edits and point out things that are wrong. If you are like most people who are not writers, you may not recognize errors. So, you either have the option of just uh, going on your best opinion or paying an editor to, to do that for you. Either way, it's, it's going to be relatively easy, whether you're a writer or not, to realize whether or not this is a good story. And if it's making sense, if the story runs completely off the rails, uh, the reader is going to pick that up and you're probably going to get a bad review. Now, I know publishers who don't even read the work they have produced. And as a result, there is a lot of trash on Amazon. But as I said before, we are not creating high art here. We are creating short, typically erotic stories that the reader can read in one sitting and go off and have a good day. So. If the halfway point milestone is good, pay them that one, set the final milestone, get the final book. Okay, so that's how the process works on Upwork. I encourage you to set these milestones. Don't just say, write me a 10,000 word book and, and then see what you get. You have to do uh, quality assurance all the way through the process to make sure that you're going to get a good book. All right. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the terms and conditions. Here are my terms and conditions, and they're spelled out very clearly in the job posting. And again, if you're one of my, my students, you're well aware of this. Um, I don't pay for crap. I'm not uh, a farmer raising tomatoes. I'm not going to pay you to dump shit on my land. If the book that you submit to me is no good, I'm not going to pay you for it. It is very clearly outlined. The publisher reserves the right to reject any work for any reason and not pay final payment. Now, what happens if, if that's the case? And it's happened many times. Uh, the first thing that, that I will do is I will go back and I'll say, these are the issues that we found in the work. You have the option of attempting to correct the issues or we'll just terminate the contract here. If they elect to uh, try to correct the issues, you give them another chance. It has been my experience when you do that, they all just drop out. Okay. So if you don't pay them the final milestone, you do not own the work. The writer retains the copyright. They can take that shitty story and sell it to someone else. And I guarantee you they will. There's a market for shitty stories. Um, so, but that's the thing. Otherwise you would be paying money for stories that are going to be either unusable or will get you so many bad reviews, it's just going to shut you down. So make sure that you are, number one, be fair. You don't want to be overly critical. You know, you don't want to be uh, the putts in the situation. You have to remember you are a professional. You are a professional publisher. Uh, conduct yourself as such, but don't pay 
for crappy work. They retain the, the ownership of the work. Even if you've paid them halfway through, if you don't pay them the final payment, they retain the copyright. They retain the ownership. They can go sell it to someone else. Better them than you. Okay. Uh, let me look at my, my note here. Uh, one, of, one of the big things about doing this, about being a digital publisher and dealing with ghostwriters, typically ghostwriters, finding good ones is going to be the bane of your existence. Um, they are out there, but you may have to go through dozens of bad ghostwriters to find the good ones. When you do find a good one, grab onto them. Don't let them go. Keep them busy. Okay, so they don't go work for someone else. Um, building relationships is really the, the key here. And as in every business aspect, it's all about relationships. You want to find and identify writers that you can build ongoing relationships with. And it would be great to get a, a story a week out of these folks. That's, that's the way I've done it now. I have probably gone through, I can't tell you how many bad writers to find the six or seven that I work with consistently now. Every now and then I will throw an ad up on Upwork just to see what kind of writers are out there and see if there are anyone new. But that needs to be your goal. Find writers that you can you can keep busy and write consistently. All right. Um, I think that is about it. Uh, be very clear. And keep in mind that when you're hiring a writer, you really are hiring uh, an employee so to speak, not according to the IRS, they're a contractor, but they are someone who is looking to you for guidance. And so it's very important that the project task be very clear. It's very important that you review their work every step of the way, build the relationship and, and pay them on time. Keep in mind that a lot of these guys and gals are uh, in, in areas of the world where they're not making 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour. Okay, so if you find a writer that you are happy with, give them bonuses. I give a $50 bonus for every fifth book written. And that is one way to really instill uh, loyalty among uh, the relationship between you and your writer. So that's really it. It's kind of a, it sounds convoluted. I make it sound convoluted simply because I'm convoluted. Uh, so, but really that's it. You set up an Upwork account. You create a very clear project task, you take in the samples, you weed out, you monitor the entire process as you go through, and hopefully you have a great experience, okay? So that's going to do it. Uh, happy to answer any questions you might have about Kindle Direct Publishing, the process, the writing, whatever. Uh, email me, tim at timnox.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all over the place. Uh, earlier, I mentioned my, my coaching program. This is something new that I'm putting together. Uh, I kind of call it a uh, nuts and bolts Kindle program because I take you from step zero being, I don't know anything about the process, but I have a book and I want to write or I want to publish. And I take you through successfully launching, publishing, marketing your books, uh, still working out a few of the kinks. If you would like to be uh, on the notification list, however, uh, as soon as we launch the program, which is going to be in a couple of weeks, you can send an email to Tim at timnox.com and just uh, say, hey, Tim, I'm interested in your coaching program when you get it all put together and I will make sure that you get um, notified. All right, that is going to do it. I hope that was helpful. Get out there, ghost write some books, be successful, pet your dog. Remember, your dog is typically the nicest person you know. Tim Knox, Kindle Direct Publishing Q&A. I'll see you next time.